Oh, hi there. We are already off to a great start for found lost media in 2024, and for some reason a lot of them contain controversial subject matter. Race relations in the United States, cartoon characters swearing, a show so spicy it was cancelled mid-episode, a TV special by a now reviled celebrity, and most controversial of all, an attempt at a prequel series for a beloved cartoon. I'll even add a recently unearthed short film from Weird Al to even things out. And I want to start with a recently found pilot for a show that even though it's received glowing reviews, I don't think it really gets the credit for how good it was. The Boondocks is really one of the greatest and most uncomfortable shows I have ever seen. I watched it as a teenager and didn't really get it, but watching it now, it's really impressive how well some of this has aged. And if you're not familiar, this is a scene from the first 30 seconds of episode 1. Jesus was black, Ronald Reagan was the devil, and the government is lying about 9-11. Thank you for your time and good night. Even if you don't like the message, what really makes it great is the showrunner's freedom to speak absolutely unfiltered. The show follows the Freeman family. Huey, a frequently underestimated counterculture revolutionary, his mischievous hip-hop culture-obsessed younger brother, and their old-school granddad, who all live in a predominantly white American suburb. But before The Boondocks became one of the most underrated shows of all time, it faced a near-death experience at the hands of network television censorship. The year was 2003. Aaron McGruder dreamt of translating his controversial 1990s comic strip into an animated series. Fox saw potential in the adaptation and ordered a pilot, but McGruder immediately clashed with the network's restrictions. His frustration was palpable in an interview with the AV Club, where he openly says that broadcast TV is a very restrictive place, and it's tough to be daring and do something different. Unsurprisingly, Fox rejected the pilot in 2004. The dream seemed over. The pilot relegated to the television graveyard, a cautionary tale for creators trying to push the boundaries. But fate, or perhaps love for unhinged animation, intervened. Cartoon Network's Adult Swim programming block, known for embracing the controversial, saw potential in the ostracized pilot. Mike Laszlo, Adult Swim's programming VP, even said that the pilot felt watered down. The exact thing Mick Gruder was telling the executives at Fox. Adult Swim offered the creative freedom that the boondocks needed, and the rest is history. For years, the Fox pilot remained a legend among fans, who questioned if it even existed. But in 2016, we got a glimmer of hope. A 21 second clip surfaced online, showcasing a unique animation style closer to the original comic strip. A tantalizing peek into what could have been. This was followed by rumors of the pilot being screened at conventions, though it's debated if this ever actually happened. Fast forward to February 17th, 2024, the entire six minute pilot emerged from the shadows. Uploaded by the mysterious user Cal underscore Eastwood, the pilot is finally available to the public. Unlike a lot of pilot episodes, this one was never modified into a full episode of the show, and it really doesn't have much of a plot, it just establishes the characters. The art style is slightly different, but somehow Granddad looks exactly the same. The humor is very much like the final series, even though it's obviously toned down. The show was infamous in its day for the frequent use of the n-word, which is completely absent in the pilot. But they were still able to make their opinions known, like the controversial character Uncle Ruckus, a caricature of internalized racism. In the pilot has books like Uncle Tom's Con Comics, a black lawn jockey, a lawn decoration with a history of racism, and is critical of everything his black nephews do while dismissing the bad behaviors of white children in his neighborhood. All in all, this is a real treasure, and a reminder of the creative battles being fought behind the scenes every day, and how important it is to overcome them. In 2022, there was talks of a new season of The Boondocks, but it looks like we'll just have to settle for the pilot. Courage the Cowardly Dog, that perpetually nervous pink puppy who somehow managed to always save his little corner of Kansas from the most terrifying abominations you will ever see in a kid show. Like this guy messed me up as a kid. But in recent years, there's been talk of a prequel series showing Courage's younger years, a show called Before Courage. Back in 2018, whispers of a Courage the Cowardly Dog prequel began to swirl. The original show's creator, John Dilworth, confirmed that the show was in the works with Boomerang, the nostalgic corner of Cartoon Network. The idea was to explore Courage's life before landing on the doorstep of Muriel and Eustace. For a while, development moved along pretty well, with a pilot titled Goblins of Litter taking shape. 
In September 2021, a crossover movie was released with Courage and Scooby-Doo called Straight Out of Nowhere, Scooby-Doo meets Courage the Cowardly Dog, that was met with decent reviews. But around this same time, Cartoon Network's priorities shifted, and before Courage got relegated to the back burner. Negotiations stalled, and the project seemingly vanished into the ether. Fans mourned the loss of this peek into Courage's past, left with nothing but whispers and what-ifs. Even though we never got the official Courage spinoff, out of nowhere in February 2024, Dilworth himself uploaded the animatic for the scrapped pilot onto his YouTube channel. So while we may never get a full-fledged series, we can still witness a glimpse of what could have been. So what was found? The animatic offers a fascinating look into a different Courage, and the story itself involves a battle against litter-spewing goblins that leans into the show's signature brand of surreal humor. All in all, this animatic pilot is very on-brand to the original. Like, prequel series are almost always terrible, but based on what we've seen, Before Courage might have been the exception. And something I really liked is instead of giving a lazy, singular reason for Courage being nervous all the time, they really just show it through the way his parents interact with him. They're morbidly exaggerative, aloof, and stubborn in a way that forces Courage to clean up their messes. It's a bittersweet reminder of a project that could have been, but also a testament to the enduring power of Courage the Cowardly Dog. I have a link to the animatic in the description, but just a warning, the audio is mixed terribly. Like the sound effects and music are going to give you a jump scare if you have it turned up too loud. Imagine a world before Saturday Night Live, even before Monty Python, where television sketch comedy hadn't dared yet to push boundaries. Then came Turn On, a show so ahead of its time it imploded on national television. This was a sketch comedy show like no other. Gone were the cozy sets and familiar faces. Instead, rapid fire skits assaulted viewers with a barrage of multimedia madness. The creators, fresh off the success of Laugh-In, envisioned a show that defied definition, a visual and sensory assault that utilized live action, animation, and stop motion, crammed into a dizzying 25 minutes. No laugh track, just a relentless barrage of the weird and the downright offensive at some points. ABC, eager to capitalize on counterculture comedy, picked up the show. This was a big mistake. The February 1969 premiere was a disaster. Viewers, expecting edgy humor, were treated to a sensory overload that left them bewildered and outraged. Affiliate stations were bombarded with angry calls, some even pulling the show mid-episode. And after the show aired on the East Coast, word spread and stations on the West Coast canceled their planned airings. Turn On was promptly turned off. Its fate sealed by a combination of bad timing, an outraged audience, and a show that, to be honest, was just too experimental for its own good. But the story doesn't end there. The legend of Turn On continued. For years, the only evidence that this show existed was a bizarre animation clip. But then, in 2021, a miracle. A second clip on YouTube. More followed, culminating in the upload of episodes 1 and 2 in 2023 by the YouTube channel Phil Rock. The episodes were quickly removed, but they eventually led to an official release on the channel Crown Jewels. But again, it wouldn't end there. On February 4th, 2024, the channel Crown Jewels would come in clutch with a third unfinished episode. Only, it's not so unfinished. Not anymore. This episode was assembled from never-before-seen archival footage with the help of the show's original creator, George Slatter. Finally being able to complete his vision for a third and final episode of one of the most infamous programs in television history, 55 years after it was filmed. The humor is undeniably dated, and while rapid fire editing is common now, they really didn't have the tech for it back then and it's just headache inducing. But there is an undeniable energy to it, and a sense of rebellion that's kind of charming. It might not be a classic, but it is a glimpse into a show that dared, maybe a little bit too hard, to be different. In 2009, musician Weird Al Yankovic embarked on a bizarre educational journey, a 3D exploration of the human brain. This wasn't your average Weird Al experience. Al's Brain is an 11 minute short film aimed to be both informative and entertaining. It's a bit of a mix of Al interacting with quirky animated characters, singing songs, and talking about the mysteries of the brain. The short film boasted a hefty $2.5 million cost, most of which I assume went to the CGI and the gratuitous number of celebrity cameos. Like, it's pretty ridiculous how much they crammed into the 11 minutes. 
They have Tim and Eric demonstrating the length of the unraveled human brain. Paul McCartney gets a couple lines. There's a skit with Weird Al playing Phineas Gage, the infamous railroad worker who survived a metal pole piercing his skull that also features Thomas Lennon and Patton Oswalt. And they even get Fabio to make an appearance and they just immediately roast him. Yes, it's true that you only use 10% of your brain. Pretty much everybody else uses their entire brain. Like, imagine being asked to do an educational kid show, but you're just there so they can make fun of how stupid you are. But the real star of the show is Norm the Owl, voiced by Billy West. The film delves into the brain's structure and function, and even explains why deciphering the human brain is so challenging, comparing it to understanding the end of 2001 A Space Odyssey. Attendees of the 2009 Orange County Fair, where the film premiered, were treated to a full brainatorium experience. This included 3D glasses, brain teasers, and a 1950s style lecture warning viewers about the dangers of brain freeze. Al's brain proved to be a crowd pleaser, drawing a quarter million attendees at the 2009 Orange County Fair alone. It even made a guest appearance at the Palamet Fair in Washington State later that year. There are rumblings of a screening at Expo 2010 in Shanghai, but it's still unconfirmed if this ever happened. Then, total blackout. After its theatrical run, Al's brain vanished. The only trace? The Brain Song, a musical ode to the brain's various lobes, featured on Weird Al's 2017 compilation album, Squeezebox. For years, the film remained a lost media mystery. There was a ray of hope when a cam rip emerged on Google Drive, but it was swiftly deleted. But February 2024 brought a glorious resurrection. The YouTube channel Bryce Buchanan yielded the full film in 4K. The upload was removed for copyright issues, but the full movie can be found on the Internet Archive. In between his breakthrough TV role on I Spy and his first self-titled TV show, The Bill Cosby Show, not to be confused with the more successful The Cosby Show from the 80s, and all before his off-screen atrocities were made public, in 1969, Bill Cosby developed the animated TV special Hey Hey Hey, It's Fat Albert, based on a character from his stand-up routine. Production on the special was a whirlwind. Animators toiled under tight deadlines, crafting the special with grease pencils and cells. Live action footage from Philadelphia was incorporated. However, it's said that the results were not good. The live action segments clashed with the animation, creating a jarring viewing experience. This style was never used in future Fat Albert content and is part of the reason why the special was never released. The heart of the story focuses on Fat Albert grappling with his weight and his struggle to connect with his friends, but culminates in a classic underdog tale with Fat Albert using his size to lead his team to a football victory. Though this special would eventually lead to the classic TV series Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids, the special from 1969 only aired a couple times and was never released on home media. For years, the only trace was a blurry, red-tinted clip showcasing Fat Albert as an absolute unit on the field. Fast forward to 2024, the full audio of the TV special was found, allowing fans to finally hear the jokes, dialogue, and funky soundtrack by jazz legend Herbie Hancock. But the quest for the footage still continues. There have been two more clips unearthed, one from the documentary Floyd Norman, An Animated Life, that's in pristine quality, hinting that there might be better preserved footage out there and another low quality clip that makes it look like Albert can expand his body at will. I have no idea what's going on there. And hopefully one day, the full video will follow. Sailor Mouth from the second season of SpongeBob SquarePants is one of the show's classic episodes. SpongeBob discovers bad words that Patrick informs him are sentence enhancers to make you sound fancy, not knowing their real meaning. Mr. Krabs has to explain to them that they can't use these words, but over the course of the episode, they continue to use them. When the voice actors were recording their dialogue, they were told to use substitution words for the profanity, even though it was going to be censored in post-production. But they found this too difficult and recorded their lines with actual profanity. This has been hotly debated. The idea of Mr. Krabs, Spongebob, and Patrick saying every bad word they could think of just seems too good to be true. But several voice actors have came forward saying that the uncensored dialogue did happen and that copies might still exist. In a 2024 Discord Q&A, Mama Krabs voice actor Paul Tibbet claimed to have been in possession of the uncensored dialogue on VHS. Not long after the Q&A, voice clips were leaked that claimed to be part of the uncensored dialogue from Sailor Mouth. In the scene where Spongebob and Patrick are playing eels and escalators, Spongebob lets one rip after rolling eels three times in a row, and it sounds like the voice actor was saying, blow me. Ah, blow me! And there's another clip of Spongebob saying, 
face in lower quality, and I can't quite tell where this would have fit in the episode. Maybe it's from the same scene, just a different take. But given the rise of public AI technology and how awkward this line sounds, the validity of the dialogue has been called into question. But Paramount seemingly confirmed their legitimacy by removing the original upload of these uncensored clips. You can still find re-uploads online, I'll leave a link in the description to one of these clips, and you can decide for yourself if this is the elusive, uncensored dialogue from Sailor Mouth. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what other pieces of found lost media you want me to cover in a future video. And a big shout out to my top tier Patreon supporters. Utterly Happy, Can You Say Rocco Maflod, Miss Dana, Vinny Cataldo, and Odesta Honeycrisp. Thank you all so much. This is Mike with All Things Lost. See you soon.